Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back to your daily crypto news and analysis. And today we're going to be talking about Casper Network, aka Casper the Friendly Ghost. So let's just dive in and let's start off with my tweet from the other day. So I've been starting to see a large amount of individuals commenting on my Casper tweets, um, and it's pretty funny, right? So for all those out there that don't know, I'm very transparent on this channel. I've talked about many of my holdings in the past. Casper is and probably always will be my number one holding uh, simply because of how much I have of it. Um, I tweeted out on the 5th. I said, I've bought so much Casper. It's ridiculous. This has been my number one holding for a while and continues to be. I have so much confidence in the future of Casper Network and Casper. And then... In my comments, in the replies, I seen so many replies about the tokenomics. I said here, the responses on this tweet make me laugh. I'd rather hold X token if it has an infinite amount, or this project has better tokenomics than Casper, so I'll pass, or why would I invest into a token that has an infinite amount? Um, I said, basically, supply means nothing in the world of enterprises. We make the supply of a token the center point of every argument. I said, it's one of many factors behind a project's success. The argument to pass on Casper is dictated by an 8% APY inflation rate on the token. This is comical considering it would take a decade to have the same supply as most top 15 slash 20 tokens. I personally love to see people pass up on an opportunity like Casper. It adds more fuel to the fire when it starts to ignite and spread. And yeah, I mean, listen, we've been talking about the supply ratio of Casper for a very long time. Um, when we look at tokens like HBAR, I understand why we are concerned with tokenomics. Full transparency, yes, HBAR is also one of my top holdings. Um, it is not number one, but it is within my like top five holdings. Um, it is a project that during 2021, the price action did get stifled quite a bit due to the amount of tokens getting released. But we know with Casper, it is a little bit of a different story. It's 8% year over year. Um, but when we take a look at that, it's such a minimal amount being released that within 10 years, the supply will essentially double. But that is 10 years. Okay, think about how much can change within 10 years. And also, us validators on the network, remember, we could vote against the 8%, meaning we could stop that 8% tomorrow and basically have zero inflation on the token which allows me to sleep at night knowing that Casper is, in my opinion, one of the best opportunities within the space. Now, I'm not the only one that has debunked tokenomics. Uh, shout out to the X Frontier. He actually made an incredible thread. I'm going to in include this uh, tweet at the bottom of the description or maybe at the top. It doesn't matter, um, but it will be in the description below. You guys are more than welcome to go check it out because honestly, it is an incredible thread. And I really do think that it debunks a lot of what we do see around Casper in terms of FUD. Um, I personally am not worried at all about the 8% year over year. Um, I know that a lot of people are concerned about this and that's totally fine. Listen, I don't make these videos to make people invest in the Casper. I'm sitting here making these videos to give you guys my updated view on Casper. Uh, uh, what's happening around Casper, things like that. But I have been seeing the supply being a big focus point for a while. I understand the idea of like no max supply. I understand the concerns around that. But I want you all to understand that at the end of the day, these tokens that do have a large amount of supply, like even HBAR, um, a large amount of that supply will be utilized, uh, especially during, you know, enterprise grade applications going live and things like that. So I'm not too concerned at all with the inflation rate. I think that it's minimal. I don't think that's going to have a big effect on price action or anything like that. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's basically me um, telling you guys exactly about the tokenomics. I don't think that it's a big concern. But also, right, the 8% year over year. When we take a look at the 8%, you could also beat the inflation by staking your Casper. Right now, almost 76%, and this fluctuates, we almost, I think we we're at like 77% the other day, um, but this is nearly at 76% of the total supply staked, earning 10.53% um, APY. Now over on Uphold, which by the way, full transparency, again, I do not use Uphold to buy Casper. I've talked about why I don't like the fact that my, my Casper tokens are locked up on um, a centralized exchange. Um, I don't like it at all. Uh, I personally buy my uphold or on, um, sorry, my Casper on Mexi rather than buying it on uphold. Initially on, I did buy Casper on uphold. Uh, but again, like 
<laughs> there was no way that I was holding Casper on a centralized exchange like that without having the opportunity to withdraw. So I moved over to Mexi. Obviously, you guys could utilize any exchange that you want, but the reason why I use Mexi is because I could instantly withdraw my tokens. They're not locked on on exchange because it's not a tier three in quotation marks asset, which is the main argument from Uphold. Um, I'd rather stake my Casper on Casper.live. I'm earning 10.53% rather than I think it's like 9% over on um, Uphold. So you do you. Um, but I do think that staking Casper is 100% a great opportunity um, if you do, you know, if, if you can. Because, again, 10.53%, you can't beat it. You're beating out the inflation. And also, for those out there that do want to learn how to stake, um, I'm not going to make another video just because I don't really want to um but if you guys do want to go check out a video kevin cage actually has a, a video on how to stake like i said the only reason why i don't want to make a video is because one i don't want to compete with anybody else out there um but also kevin cage's video is incredible and it really does go in depth on how to stake how to move your tokens and all that kind of stuff especially even onto ledger so shout out to kevin cage i'll include the staking video down in the description below as well for all of you out there but also, with all of that in mind, let's take a look at Casper. So, um, in general, when we take a look at how much Casper is um, out there and we look around like everything happening with Casper, many of the things that get overlooked when we talk about Casper is how early Casper still is. Um, this is still a very early on project. It's still a very new project. When we take a look at the users and developers all time, we're sitting at about 1.25k average daily transactions, which I know that you're going to look at this and look at like HBAR or something else. Yeah, it's a different story, right? Um, it's because there's not a lot of activity going on on the network. There's not a lot of transactions being sent because it's still very new. Um, but there is 188 smart contracts deployed. Um, there's been about 1. almost 1k average daily transactions the past 30 days which by the way this is a report as of december 19th uh, i'm sure that we probably have a newer report but this is the latest one that i could find from masari um, but we do see 76 percent token transfers 22 percent delegating plus undelegating two percent other smart contract calls 30 unique smart contracts called um, so most of the transaction flow is from token transfers. Uh, the rest, like 24% or so, is from delegating, undelegating, and other smart contract calls. Um, there was 80% of the supply staked at this time. Um, I think since this report, I think that we've seen the supply get a little bit updated. I think that they uh, were able to actually get that fully transparent for us. So a lot of things kind of changed since this report, but for the most part, the users and developers are kind of the same. Um, but we are starting to see a little bit of a, a shift happening. And going forward, I do think that we will start to see more and more noise being made from the Casper side. For example, here's that roadmap that I was talking about in previous videos where I said the roadmap looks pretty solid uh, going forward on. Uh, so for an example, Casper 2.0. Um, we know that this is going to be announced and fully launched uh, by somewhere within the end of the year, uh, hopefully. Um, I know that this could get pushed further on, but I do think that Casper 2.0 is going to be a big game changer. We're still waiting on that. Um, but also, there's a lot more. Uh, so Zug Consensus Protocol. Zug is a novel consensus mechanism that will be implemented in Casper 2.0. Uh, this, or sorry, the full paper detailing it is still in peer review, but a recent blog post compares it to Highway. The main improvement of Zug over Highway is reduced messaging overhead, which will allow Casper to increase its validator set limit from 100. Also, there's going to be unified accounts and contracts. Uh, they're also working to improving Casper's data infrastructure. Um, however, this has been taken a back seat due to Casper 2.0 upgrades. And also, they're working on building hybrid network bundle. The bundle will allow enterprises and governments to run a private version of Casper that has sidechain-like checkpoints to the public Casper network. The solution is still in development, but is nearing a minimum viable product release. And then also, growth strategy. So we know that growth strategy and these announcements partner Partnerships, etc. is very, very big. I know that everyone has been waiting for a lot of partnership announcements, which, by the way, we recently just seen three. Um, but there is going to be a full-on grant accelerator program that launched. I think this actually already launched. Um, it was $25 million um, to help, you know, ecosystem builders. I'm very excited to see those projects go live. Um, I don't know if 
we got any sort of leaks or anything like that but i know that lately we've been seeing a lot of wallets being created um there's been a lot of wallets i think that there's a few nft projects as well that are going to be launching as well but i would love to see a lot more DeFi use case applications being designed uh which i'm pretty sure that we are starting to see that happening as well i know for the most part we we've been focused on um the other ones that we already have here like uh i know the the biggest one that we talked about in the past um around casper which we actually made a video on was friendly uh market which always looks very solid um every time that we look at it so with that uh we are definitely looking forward to a lot more partnership announcements i know recently these uh the, the, the partnerships have been building up uh we recently seen the google cloud partnership uh followed by skybridge and also al mascari holding um which was always great to see i mean like listen three announcements in in the month of uh march was great to see but i'm looking forward to seeing a lot more announcements i know that there's a ton of ndas like i said the benefit of being in a project that is this early on is the fact that we get to see it build from the ground up um the negative is that if you don't have patience and you can't stand to see a project kind of just trail sideways um then hey maybe it's not for you maybe you should jump into a, to a token that is you know pumping massively or so which a lot of people do which is a big mistake right uh so being in at the the bottom ground level is al is always boring right and it sucks because you know a lot of people are here to make quick gains but the problem is is that guess what that's just not what we do that that's not what crypto is um i know that a lot of big influencers and a lot of videos out there will you know sell the get rich quick schemes around crypto oh jump into this token um most of it is just pump and dump schemes right so the the biggest issue is that on this channel when we do focus on projects we focus on projects that have you know solid use case applications utility and when we looked at casper initially on it was a project that was still very early it was still very new and there's not a lot going on right now and for most people that's a big turnoff they don't want to invest into a project that you know doesn't have a hundred plus projects live on it and this and that and you know it's not that flashy but guess what in time it will be I've talked about this many times around any project in the space, you know, being in early and, and seeing things come together is incredible because one, that's where most of the gains are made. ADA during 2020 and 2019 is a perfect example of that. There wasn't a lot going on. There wasn't a lot of people talking about it. And then all of a sudden, boom, the end of 2020 into 2021, everyone was talking about it. They, they had DeFi, they had this, they had that. And you know, it becomes a big talking point. And I believe the same will happen with casper i i believe the same is happening right now with hbar i mean hbar for the longest time was overlooked and then all of a sudden boom first grade uh first enterprise grade application goes live and everybody's talking about it so with that in mind um i do think that casper is the next one up i think that casper if they continue to do what they have been doing which is building making noise expanding they're not going to have an, a, a single issue uh with what their end goal is which is focused on enterprise applications enterprise grade growth and, you know, again, enterprise grade adoption. So with that in mind, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe to notifications on. If you guys have more free content, you guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord down in the description below. Uh, so it's up to you all. Have a beautiful day or a beautiful night. Wherever you guys are in this beautiful world, this has been Nick. Peace out, guys.